hope you're okay. Welcome to Workout Wednesday. It's me, Andy Chadwick, and I've got a, a leg workout for you today that you can do at home in the comfort of your own home. I'm here in the guest bedroom. And I'm gonna be using some different equipment. So we've got the dumbbells that we typically use, but I'm actually gonna be getting the foam roller out. I'm gonna be getting the, the band out. And I'm gonna give you some exercise variations that you may not have thought of that you could do at home. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. Make sure you subscribe, click the link, um, keep the, the sharing going and stay up to date with the content. And we'll get to it. Hopefully we're not interrupted too much by the little man. So I'm starting the workout off with a dumbbell hack squat. And as you can see here, I've got a foam roller resting on the back and I'm lowering down, hitting 90 degree bend and driving on back up. Now, all the clips here are gonna be either two times or one and a half times sped up and you'll see it from the, the dog in the background. Um, I was making sure that I was overloading as best as possible with the weights that I have available or creating a workout that has exercises where you can focus on imbalances and develop the, the muscle in each leg as opposed to necessarily not being able to go too heavy and having to try and force more volume in so during this time of quarantine it's a case of we want to be trying to strengthen or improve our progress in the gym when we can get back into it so really focus on hitting that 90 degree bend keeping the stomach engaged with this one and you'll feel a great burn through the top of the thighs it was actually really good exercise and I enjoyed it Supersetted this with some lunges, so I wasn't just working on one exercise at a time. I did throw some supersets in there, and this is the one that I supersetted with the hack squat. And again, 90 degree bend in the legs is what we're aiming for with this one. Stepping forward, 12 on each leg, driving back to the top, making sure that you're keeping control, keeping the stomach engaged. And it was just a case of trying to overload with the lunges. And obviously the unilateral stuff of the lunges focusing on each leg allows you to overload a little more on each thigh individually. I then threw some kind of posterior work with some curtsy lunges. Again, three sets, 12 reps. I did do this one on its own and just threw it in as a kind of almost like a, a volume increased exercise or increasing exercise where you can just get a few extra reps in and just focus on some posterior work as opposed to everything being on the anterior or the front side of the body. So really just focus on, again, like hitting that 90 degree bend, stepping across and I can feel my adductors working and my glutes working as well as I was stepping across the body. It's a really good exercise just to throw in there that you can put in as a lateral movement. Again, so you'll see here, stepping across the body, I'm making sure that I'm crossing the plane. So my left foot, if we do a straight line, it would probably hit where that dumbbell is. And then from there, I'm stepping across and the dog's bone is probably a good marker. So you, you step in a good foot across behind your body and creating that 90 degree bend in both knees and then driving on back up. It's a great exercise that you can do if you struggle with anything um, kind of behind the body and across the body. It gives you a greater range of motion at the hips and certainly at the, the, the glutes, you're gonna get a lot more activation. Moving on to the posterior body, I did hit some Nordic hamstring curls. Now, again, like I said, this clip is sped up, so the distance, the time it's taken me to get to the floor is actually a little bit slower, but I'm catching myself at the bottom, and I'm actually using the first little portion, maybe the 10 to 15 degrees off the floor to actually help me get back up, and then I'm actually using my hamstrings to contract myself back to the top. So I'm trying to use my hamstrings as much as possible here. Superset, I did superset this one with hip thrust pulses, so I kept the dumbbell on the hips, dro drove on up, but I did find that the bed was a little bit too high in terms of position to be able to get my uh, glutes activating enough, so what I did at the end of this set and I did at the end of every set was with the band I got to the top and squeezed, but then I also added some pulses in as well just to overload the, the lateral portion of the glutes a little bit more here. Last two supersets then, I threw in some partial calf raises. And the reason why they're called partial calf raises is because I'm not standing on a step or a platform where my heels go down and I create a, a deeper than 90 degree bend. So I'm just focused on the top portion of the movement, which is okay because it allows you to overload the calves at their shortest point. So it's a great exercise that you can throw in to, to overload the calves a little bit more. And certainly turning the toes in here, like I did, 
Um, it's a great way of being able to target a little more of the lateral portion, excuse the cat, the lateral portion of the calf. If you turn the toes outwards, you'll get a little more of the medial portion or the, the inside portion. So it's a great variation that you can throw in and try and target the, the calves in a different way. And then moving on to the last one, I threw in some seated calf raises. And this is targeting a little more of the soleus as opposed to the the gastrocnemius or the calf muscle itself that everyone typically knows and if you're interested in knowing more about how to train calves I have put a training tip Tuesday together about calf training and it involves these two exercises as well as a couple of others that you can learn from so I hope you enjoyed it folks and I'll see you all in the next workout Wednesday